How's it going YouTube? Welcome back to another video on the channel and today we are back on the tier maker for the new format we just had YCS Vegas that kind of shook up things after the tier elements ban list and I think we have a lot to talk about. Let's dive in. If you want 5% off any single or sealed product head over to tierzerogames.com and use code GALZO5 at checkout. So new format new YCS, a lot of new decks coming into the format, nothing super surprising, but we do have a lot to break down in terms of hand traps. So before we begin, make sure to leave a thumbs up on the video, subscribe if you are new as always, and some Despian merch. If you want some for yourself, the website is now up. Everything is $10 off, which is kind of crazy. You have hats, t-shirts, black, gray, white, get it now, galzo.shop, head over there to check it out. And tier list. So I'm going to be looking at this um, through the lens of three of the strongest decks of the format, in my opinion, which are going to be Branded, Kostura, and Labyrinth. Also, I think Sprite and Runic shouldn't be, um, you know, messed with. I think they are very good decks still, and they put up a challenge, especially when now... After the first event, you can be ready for the strongest deck. So let's dive into it and talk about Moonlit Chill. So um, we have, of course, the tiers. I changed up a little bit. Very strong, good, decent, mediocre, and unplayable. I think decent is going to be something that you will play sometimes. Mediocre is going to be something that is not very effective. And unplayable will be something that you definitely don't play at all. And I think Moonlit Chill, um, and I am going to put Valor here as well because they serve sort of like similar purposes. I think Moonlit Chill is more situational um, when it comes to negating something only when uh, after it's special summoned, while Valor is sort of like an all-around thing, but in light of Arise Heart and Kostura being able to banish everything um, from the hand, the deck, the grave, everything, um, it might struggle a little bit. So I think in terms of Moonlit Chill, Right now, it might be good, um, especially if you're talking about something like Unicorn. It also wins in time in some scenarios, and I think Valor is going to be just decent at this point. We have um, Dogwood and Winter Cherries that are like very, very specific tech cards. I think that Winter Cherries is going to be a little bit mediocre now because one, um, you have three main decks that are competing with one of them being a deck um, labyrinth specifically that doesn't utilize the extra deck at all they don't care about the extra deck so i think mully chill right now is gonna be it's gonna be mediocre at best i wouldn't say unplayable um and also i think dogwood is what you would call situational in previous um tier lists it is situational because it only serves one purpose. It's still strong, but as a hand trap, it's effective for only one single thing. So I think that for this reason, I'm going to keep both of these in mediocre. Now we have the Bistials. Uh, we have all of them. Um, I think that I'm going to be looking at it through the lens of specifically a hand trap. Because I think in, in Branded, Serenir is still extremely good. Um, it's a, a very important engine piece to the deck. While the other ones serve not a lot of purpose. I mean, Druze is, is nice, Magnemite, of course, and, and um, Baldrake, they serve good purposes in, in a deck that, that, that can run it successfully. But I think as a hand traps, I would put probably all of them at decent. And I'm going to put Serenir on top because it's probably the best one in, in the context of Branded. Um... I don't think, like, even when Branded is in the format, I really don't think that people are going to be playing a lot of Bistials right now. They're just way less effective, except for, like, the Mirror Match as a hand trap. So, I think for now, unfortunately, the Bistials take a backseat after Telemits being hit. And Nibiru is probably going to be in the very strong category. Um, I think that Nibiru specifically has very good interaction with Branded and... Um, Kostura. I think both decks can play around it pretty good. I think Kostura, a lot of times we saw in the YCS of um, boards that end with a Rise Heart with three materials, that's four summons in total, pass. It's a weaker board, 
granted, but it's still a banish and a floodgate. And if you have things like preparation and hand traps, you still are able to play really, really well. On the other hand, against Branded, you have things like Tribe Grade Mercurier, which is the only way to out um, the Nibiru. It's the only way to negate it. And otherwise, you kind of lose your whole board. You might have some follow up, but overall, it's still pretty solid if they don't have mercurier then it's pretty solid definitely so i think nibiru is a very strong hand trap um and it's probably going to be one of the strongest ones that we see in a lot of people's decks then we have droll i think i'm going to put droll in the good uh, i'm going to put it even above uh, moonlit chill i think droll is not exceptional because of things like a rise heart again but it has a very good utility versus branded and kashira so branded if they start with um the route of patchwork specifically they have something like patchwork or they you know add something to the hand before going for the aluber it's very strong it probably kills the combo if they don't have branded on the other hand versus kashira it's situational because if they start with the unicorn and they go unicorn effect they add you activate droll they still have the Theosis to keep pushing, and if they have extenders in hand, they're still going to be comboing. But if you hit it on something like the Field Spell, or even better, Terraforming, then it's really, really devastating. So I think it's a solid choice. It might be very good in some scenarios. Um, and again, against Rogue decks, now the, the format is a little bit more open. It's good against things like Runic, so I think it's, it's very playable. And I think Lancia is probably going to take the same spot. I think that... Lancia versus Branded is extremely solid. It's very good versus things like Runic, and it's obviously very good against Kastria because dropping this means that they basically cannot resolve the Rise Heart, which is a very important piece to their combo. They still might be ending on a strong board. Again, they can do just like um, a Rise Heart pass. May maybe it's here because of that specifically, because they, if they have enough extenders, if they have Theosis, if they have like the Field Spell, and they will, if they have Birth, they can still extend and end on a solid board. So I think it's good, but definitely more situational. I think Meister is going to be unplayable. I think Orange Light is going to be unplayable. And honestly, I think that, you know, Kelpic is going to be unplayable. These three have really fallen off since Tier Elements um, hit the format. And um, yeah, I don't think there's a lot to talk about there. Shifter is... It's still good, but if you're talking about the the strongest decks of the format, and you're talking about, let's say, Kostura and Labyrinth, Labyrinth even plays Shifter themselves. Kostura, obviously, doesn't care about Banishing. It is pretty solid against Branded, so I think it's such a strong card. Um, and again, because of Rogue decks, things like Sword Soul, things like Runic, things like Naturia, it's still a very good hand trap. It's super strong, obviously, but I think it it's fallen off a little bit because of Tier Limits being banned. And I think Ash is probably going to take the top spot, unfortunately. Whenever there's a format where you have Branded and this card basically kills the entire deck altogether, then I think, I think it's enough for that. But also, it hits Labyrinth. It's very, very good against Big Welcome and Welcome Labyrinth, which is a which is a huge deal. Deal it it kind of deals with their main point of interaction in the combo. So I think Ash is extremely strong there. And of course, if you Ash the Theosis and they don't have a way to extend, it pretty much kills their entire turn. So I think Ash is definitely very strong. Ogre is gonna be like even unplayable at this point, to be honest. What do you even hit? I don't think there's anything there. I think that Bell is going to be, it's probably going to be like top decent. It's pretty decent. It's good versus Bestials. It's very good against Branded. It's also good versus Labyrinth in some cases. You know, they special summon from the graveyard sometimes. They banish from the graveyard. They set cards from the graveyard. So it doesn't prevent that specifically. But um, sometimes you would also be able to hit Birth with this, which is very strong. Um, and... I think it also hits the the Kostra extender. So I think overall Bell is definitely solid. Um, Crow is probably going to be like you know at the bottom with the Bestials right here at the bottom decent. It's good versus certain strategies. It's maybe even mediocre to be honest. Um, yeah, I think it's 
yeah, it's not it's not doing much right now, right? <laughs> um, Infinite Impermanence is probably going to be here. It's such a versatile, strong card. It's good going first, good going second. Against the Kostura combo, honestly, if you Imperm the Rise Heart, it hurts a lot. And if they even end on like the a Rise Heart with three materials pass, just Imperm and play, which I think is very good. Um, I think this serves a lot of good purposes. It negates the column, so it's good versus things like Labyrinth. Um, and of course, I think it's exceptionally good against Branded as well. So the deck is strong, but it gets killed by, by these two um, significantly. Gamma is... I think gam Gamma is pretty good. So I think as a utility card in Branded, it's pretty good to, to protect your, your Branded Fusion. Um, other decks can play this as well. I've seen builds of Sprite now running like a Gamma and a Cyframe package with Lambda and stuff like that, just like for extension and also like a lot of negation from the hand once you have Lambda. I think it could be pretty good. I think it could be pretty good around here, I would say. And Chaos Hunter... It might be pretty good, to be honest. I think that we haven't seen this played out because it's such like a minus and a commitment and you know it doesn't really do much against Kostura it could it's, it's like a Lancia but the the, the fact is, is that it kind of loses to, to thrust because they now have a monster on board and it's not really hard to out to be honest it has no protection on its own it's 2500 which means that every Kostura monster can get over this with the field spell um you know, if they have a Fenrir and you summon this, it's pretty much over. So it's probably decent at most. And I think Contact C is going to be... It's probably going to be really good. Um, I think that Contact C, if you don't know what this does, is that when your opponent um, normal or special summons, you summon it to their field. And if they want to Synchro, Link, Xyz, or Fusion, they have to use this monster. So Kostura, for example, if you hit them with this at the right time, they have no way to out it, and it basically ends their turn. Branded, pretty much the same thing. If you hit them at the right spot, and the only thing that they can play is basically sprint the Iron Dash Dragon to out it, there's no way they play, and they just have to pass, because they can't even link, obviously. Um, and Evenly Matched is not a hand trap, and it's here for just Legacy. I made this list, and I keep update updating it, um, but there's no way to remove the images, and like a while ago I put it as a hand trap, so it's not going to be included. But it will be included in the board breakers tier list that we're going to do this week as well. So I think this is pr pretty much how the list looks like for me. Let me know in the comments. I would really, really like to hear your opinion on what do you think about the hand traps that are really, really good and impactful during this format. Kostura, Branded, Labyrinth, we got Sprite, we got Runic still in the game, Sword Soul sometimes. So a lot of these become very effective during this format. So it kind of opened up back again where we don't have to play only Bestials, but we can actually play a diverse amount of hand traps. So I hope you enjoyed this one. Leave a comment down below. What do you think about this list? Leave a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you are new. If you want to get early access to all of my deck lists through Discord, consider joining as a member, supporting the channel and getting all the deck lists before everybody else. And of course, the SPL merch is now out, galzo.shop, www.galzo.shop. You can get it over there. Everything is $10 off. So uh, a launch discount, if you will. Thank you so much for watching again. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.